One of my favorite things about retro games is that 25 years later, I still discover brand new interesting games that I want to try out. Uh, and an extension of that is the incredible fan projects out there. So I thought I'd do a little list of my favorite 25 games that were never commercially released back in the day. These are ROM hacks, translations, or just unreleased games that have leaked. I hope you enjoy. Sonic the Hedgehog 3 originally released in what felt like a very incomplete form. And I think this was confirmed when they released Sonic and Knuckles. It was half a game. Uh, Sonic 3 Complete brings back all the presentation of Sonic 3, as well as loads of bug fixes, and allows you to play the game the way you want to play it. There's a ton of custom options and a ton of things to do. So kicking off this list, Sonic 3 Complete is the definitive version of that game. At number 24, we have Battle Mania 2. Now, Battle Mania was a pretty average game released as Troubleshooter in the West, uh, which meant that Battle Mania 2 was a limited release in Japan. Now, that meant that there were very few copies sold uh, and it was never ever released in Western markets. Thankfully, uh, fans have come along and translated the game because actually the sequel is one of the best shooters on the Mega Drive that absolutely everybody should experience. Super Smash Bros. didn't really find its mega audience until the GameCube release. The original N64 version had just eight characters and was actually quite limited in its appeal. Now, the fans have gone in, they've created entire new stages, added new characters, added a load of new features, which makes the N64 game 50 times better than it originally was. If you're a fan of the N64 original of this, then you definitely need to check out Smash Remix. Back in 2017, original Sonic 3D and Traveller's Tales developer John Burton announced that he was releasing a director's cut version of Sonic 3D for the Mega Drive. Now this added so many features, it sped up the gameplay, added Super Sonic, added a save state, it even changed the colour palette so that it was more in line with Sonic Mania. And it was... it's a ton of other tweaks on top of that. So this is definitely a game that everybody should try out at number 22. At number 21, we have Zelda The Missing Link for the Nintendo 64. Now this was created by famous modder Kays. It's a game that actually picks up the story at the end of Ocarina of Time uh, and to the start of Majora's Mask. And it basically involves you losing and needing to find Navi. Now, the game is short, but it's incredibly well made. Could easily have come straight out of Nintendo uh, and is definitely worth a look if you love those games on the N64. Magical Quest 3 was the third entry in the series back on the SNES. And for some reason, this was only released in Japan. Now, it did receive a Game Boy port years later. But for me, the better sound and the better visuals on the SNES made this the definitive way to play. Um, they even managed to port the GBA title screen. So this is a really, really top-notch translation of the game. You should definitely check this one out if you're a fan of Mickey Mouse games from the 16-bit era. Conker's Hyrule Tale is a mod of the classic SNES game Zelda Link to the Past. Now, this has been billed as a sequel to Conker's Bad Fur Day on the Nintendo 64, uh, and it comes complete with all the humour and crude language you would expect from a Conker game. Now, a huge amount of work has gone into this, and that's really, really evident when you see this game. It's barely recognisable from the original Zelda game. Now... If you like top-down classic Zelda action, this is definitely a game that you should have a look at. 
Super Bomberman 5 was a Japan-only release on the SNES, which we actually had to wait 20 years to get a translation of. Now, it's more of the same if you've played any Bomberman from the 16-bit era. This is more of the same game, but I love Bomberman, so that's why this one is at number 18. At number 17, we have Napple Tail. Now, Napple Tail is a 2.5D platformer with RPG elements for the Dreamcast. This is a fantastic game that was released in Japan only and is quite famous because it was part of a Sega initiative where it was primarily developed by female uh, developers and creative team uh, and has fantastic music created by legendary anime composer Yoko Kano. Uh, it's really, really incredible to me that this never got a release and you should definitely take a look at this one. When I first saw Banjo-Kazooie The Jiggies of Time uh, and heard it was Banjo in the Zelda Ocarina of Time world, to be honest, I wasn't too bothered. I just figured that this was just a reskin and would just not be worth my time. In actual fact, this is a whole new Banjo-Kazooie adventure with, you know, created purpose-built levels in the Zelda universe. And it's proved to be one of my favorite N64 ROM mods that I have ever played. Uh, developed by Kirk, it took him over five years to develop, and you can see it's a real labor of love. It looks great. The worlds are really, really fun to explore, and I think it's actually closer to Banjo-Kazooie than it is the sequel. So if you're looking for more Banjo-Kazooie uh, after not getting Banjo-3, this could be the fix that you need. Now, it's not uncommon for Resident Evil games to go back to the drawing board. And whilst the final product, Resident Evil 2, ended up being one of the best games of all time, it's still very interesting to see this early build of Resident Evil 2 build Resident Evil 1.5 and see what might have been. It was actually leaked in 2013 uh, in an almost unplayable state, but uh, fans got the game, they added zombies to the build, they fixed broken doors and made it into a somewhat playable, decent game. If you're a Resident Evil fan and you wanted to see what could have been, definitely take a look at Resident Evil Evil 1.5. If you take elements of Mario games from the Game Boy, SNES, and Nintendo Wii, you'd probably end up with something similar to Super Mario 3D Land, a remake of the classic Game Boy game on the SNES using pre-rendered 3D sprites similar to New Super Mario Bros. Wii. It's a fantastic game to play, and to me is worthy of what would have been a, a full retail release. Really, really good. Super Mario 3D Land. One of the best looking SNES games and one with, I think, one of the best stories and immersive RPGs out there was Star Ocean. Now, released very late in the SNES life cycle, I think that there was a feeling that maybe this style of game was not for a Western audience. Now, thankfully, um, whilst it did get a release on the PSP and we have seen it in this region, the SNES version was translated by fans uh, and is a fantastic technical masterpiece if you own a SNES and love that system. So Star Ocean is a fantastic game at number 13. <laughs> Next up, we have the original Nintendo 64 version of Dinosaur Planet. Now, this game was actually cancelled and repurposed on the GameCube as Star Fox Adventures. But it's really fascinating. Last year, a build was leaked uh, in a pretty unplayable form, and fans got hold of it and created the Dino Mod Edition, which made it a much, much more playable game. Now, there's no reason to play this over Star Fox Adventures, um, which is visually far superior on the GameCube but this game is fascinating to see and would have been one of the best looking games on the N64 so if you want to see the N64 swan song check out Dinosaur Planet 
So this one is a little bit of sweet. Um, Doom on the 32X was already actually considered back in the 90s one of the stronger home console ports. Um, but it was famously rushed. There were levels missing. It didn't run as well as it could. And there was a general feeling that it was a missed opportunity. Now, back in 2021, Doom Resurrection was released, which was a remade version which has new levels, higher resolution, smoother frame rate, better lighting, a death match, co-op mode. It really was the game that this could have been with just a little more love. Now, yes, there's better ways to play Doom today and it runs on everything, but this is still a fantastic showpiece for what the 32X could have been capable of back in the day. When a game is widely considered the unofficial Mario 64 sequel, it's got to be worth a look. And Super Mario 64 Last Impact did everything that you would expect from a sequel. Huge sprawling levels, new power-ups, new enemies, new design. The game really, really had it all. So for me, there's a lot of Nintendo 64 Mario clones out there and modded versions. This is the one that everybody should try. So rounding out our top 10 is Mario 64 Last Impact. The Sega Saturn was actually a relative success in Japan, which means there's a whole host of games in the region that were never ever uh, released outside of Japan. Now, one of the best strategy games on the system, which really utilized every aspect of the Saturn's hardware, was Dragon Force. And actually, there was a sequel that was bigger and better in every single way, which has been fully translated now so that everybody can experience this game. If you're a fan of the Sega Saturn, I highly recommend you giving this one a go. Before Sonic Mania absolutely blew us away, um, there was probably the best fan uh, ROM hack out there was Sonic Mega Mix. Now, the game was originally made for the Mega Drive system, but actually due to the size of the levels and how complicated everything was getting, they upgraded it to take advantage of the Mega CD. Now, it's still great fun to play. It feels like it ends a little, little abruptly, so very much a Sonic 3 vibe to this one, but for me, this is the best Sonic game mod that you can get. Sonic Mega Mix is at number eight. Back in the mid 90s, there was concern from Sega that the rental market was killing game sales. And this meant that actually Western releases of a few games uh, were made deliberately harder so that they couldn't be completed in the weekend. And sadly, Streets of Rage 3, its Western release, fell victim to this. And it completely threw off the balance of the game. It became too hard. It wasn't enjoyable. Thankfully, the fans have jumped in and they have translated Bare Knuckle 3, the Japanese release, to a full English release. And I've got to say, it makes the game's balance so much better. The whole game it just now feels so much better and, and what the release really should have been. Uh, it's a shame, obviously, that it was messed up. Leave it to the fans to sort out. I personally think it takes this game from a 6 out of 10 to a 9 out of 10. So at number 7 is the Bare Knuckle 3 translation. At number 7 is Dolphin Blue for the Sega Dreamcast. Now, back in 2002 when Sega was acquired by Sammy, Sammy actually had a partnership with SNK to create five arcade boards for their Atomis Wave hardware. Now, Sega already had the very successful, very easy to code for Naomi system, which was built on the Dreamcast technology. Uh, so it made sense to utilize the newly acquired Sega hardware for the Atomis Wave system. The only frustrating thing is, many of these games never saw full commercial releases on home hardware. Uh, that was until a couple of years back when actually um, some very talented developers converted these games so that they ran natively on Dreamcast hardware. Uh, and I think the game that never was released was Dolphin Blue. Now, this is basically Metal Slug, but on a dolphin. It's a huge amount of fun. 
and I think everybody should try this one. This one's at number seven. At number five, we have Pulse Man for the Sega Mega Drive, which has been translated into English and was only available in Japan. Now, this game looks very similar to the Mega Man franchise. I have no idea why this was not released outside of Japan, um, because it's a really, really fantastic top tier Mega Drive game. The only thing I can think of is that obviously with 2D going out of fashion and 3D, and late in the life cycle, they didn't do this. But Pulse Man is number five. You should try this one. At number four is Secret of Mana 2, or as it's now been rebranded recently, Trials of Mana. Now, the amazing thing about this one is it's a fully fledged sequel to one of the best RPGs on the SNES. And the fact that this was allowed to exist, you know, in only in Japan for many, many years is absolutely crazy. Now, it has been re-released on the Nintendo Switch, uh, and we have had various versions released since, but to me, the SNES version with the original pixel art is absolutely beautiful. The game is stunning. The storyline is incredible, and this is one that if you've missed this and you love SNES RPGs, definitely have a look at Trials of Mana, Secret of Mana 2. So here we go into the top three and Shining Force had two fantastic entries on the Mega Drive and the Saturn version was another victim of the lack of success outside of Japan. Uh, in, the game was originally meant to be a three game scenario based game. And sadly, in the US and Europe, we just got one with a botched ending to bring it all together. Now, out in Japan, they saw the full three games, the full narrative, and it really is an epic saga. Um, it's been re-released. The fans have delicately and carefully uh, translated the game. Uh, it's an incredible experience on the Sega Saturn. If you somehow have missed this, and if you played any of the games on the Mega Drive, you should definitely pick this one up. Shining Force 3 is at number 3. There have been a ton of Streets of Rage 2 ROM hacks. However, at the end of last year, we got TMNT Shredder's Re-Revenge, which took the assets from the uh, uh, fantastic Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge and added them into the Streets of Rage universe. Now, this wasn't just the lead characters. This was also all of the enemies. Everything was changed. Uh, and the fact that the Mega Drive can handle these sprites, they were, you know tastefully toned down in order to get them to work on a Mega Drive system. And then there's custom bosses as well. It really does feel like a brand new game. And when you play this on a Mega Drive, it is pretty sensational to see. So there was only ever going to be one game at number one, and that is the sequel to Earthbound on the SNES, Mother 3 on the Game Boy Advance. Now, this game was released back in 2006, and for some bizarre and crazy reason, Nintendo has never localized this for other regions. I have no idea why. Obviously, the fa this first fan translation came out in 2008, um, it's an absolutely brilliant game. The Game Boy Advance version is fantastic. This is definitely the game that everybody should be playing. I hope for a re-release on a Nintendo system one day, but Mother 3 is number one. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe. It's great to make more of these. Really, really like comments and input. Have a great day.